cares where it runs over these hills. The bike is so easy to move, like left to right, you know, whatever you want, you see something coming up, just rides over the bumps all right. I'm not sure what the um, rear shocks are set up at the back, but, um, you know, the ride's pretty good for what it is now. Usually on, by the time I get these bikes, I'm checking tyre pressure, but the, um, uh, the spark plug change, everything else. I haven't done nothing yet except put my ass on it and ride. I don't know really long term if that's a good idea or not. I'm used to getting there um, mutilating them. I suppose I've still got the C5 and aim to attack but this doesn't look like this is almost a um, Indian Jap bike. So strange to have an infield that you don't have to get there and uh, tighten everything and uh, fix it up. Apart from that, uh, the bike is running, you know, on that little test run there, sweet. Usually by this time I'd get out of the bike on that little run and uh, some of the bikes would be smelling hot, this one here smells good. Uh, done everything well, it, it brakes really nice, it accelerates good, the cruise is really easy, yeah, that's, um, like I've just restricted it now to 80 kilometres an hour, which uh, I think, oh, I might have did 85, I don't know. But anyway, I've decided I won't give it a workout or something like that, and I'll just take it easy on it because, you know, it appears to be a really good bike, so why, why get out there and plug this shit out of it just so somebody can see it on YouTube and, and if that's the case let them buy their own and plug the shit out of that if I thought it was no good well I may have got out there and give it a workout and who cares but no I think Royal Enfield this time surprisingly have done a very good job now one thing I have noticed and I've got on and off it now a couple of times see this foot peg here on both sides when you get out off the bike in the edge here this part here sort of has got the habit of stabbing you in the lower part of the calf muscle just up from the ankle. Um, so you have to sort of be aware when you get on and off the bike or, or that the, you, um, you know, you could get that spiked into you. Not, 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 I don't mean spiked up here like that, but this part here rubbing up against you. But apart from that, at this stage, um, you know, I've heard, you know, people say the seat's a bit, um, yeah, I wouldn't want to drink a drink of water. Uh, uh, look, look, Royal Enfield, only water. Um, I wouldn't, um, I've had people complain about that, um, <clears throat> pretty odd here in Australia. Like it is today, anyway. Um, yeah, I've heard people say, the seat's not much good. I you know, tell you, there's no picnic on a C5, and I, I can honestly say I think it's a better seat to sit on the C5, so that's something you can say about. Um, what else? The gear shift, it, the gear's really good, no problems here with the gear change, nice gear change to go through. The clutch, oh geez, that clutch is a beauty, that slipper clutch. You can go up through the gears, down through the gears especially, no drama whatsoever. Uh, the brakes, you can't fault the brakes. They're, they are, they've got really, you know, a nice bit of bite. I haven't tried any really hard hits or anything like that because after all, you want everything to bed in nicely. You're not here to abuse anything. But from what I've used it, from what the few times I've tried it, they, they've got a really great bit of bite. These cheap and chatty mirrors that come with the bike. 
Um, I could see out of them no trouble at 80, 85 at some time. Oh, well, no, I think I did 90 kilometres at one stage, you know, no trouble looking out of those. Um, I've got two sets of bar end mirrors at home, a couple of one, one pair of being English ones, and they're good quality stuff. I don't know whether they fit on them, but the fact is that could be a way to go if you didn't want these stalky ones. Um, no problem with the grips, they were all right there too. And um, I had a look inside the uh, tips here, there's no bar end weights or anything like that on this bike, so it's not running anything like that. I didn't feel anything much in the way of vibration on the tank with my knees up against it or anything like that. So that part was all right. Speedo and um, Taco sit, sat fairly stable when I was riding on too. They went bouncing around and, and that was all right, so I had no trouble reading the instruments. Um, what else? You could hear the exhaust a bit from sitting on the bike as you were going along, so that part was all right. I think... Um, that was about, oh no, no the, the handling too. The handling I thought was really good for what it is. Like compared to you know, the C5, it seemed to be a really, first corner I went up to, I noticed it was a very easy bike if you want to um, swing it into a left or right corner. So that side of it alone, you know, it, it had its plus side there too. So um, find it also, I was considering, uh, or I was actually thinking how hard it'd be to ride. Very easy bike to ride. I think if you said what would be the hardest part about this bike to um, get used to would be uh, uh, foot position on brakes and um, gears. That would be the one until you get used to throwing your ass over the seat and um, moving your, foot, your toes in in towards the motor either side so that you, um, you've got everything lined up well. But apart from that, well, you know, I think it's a bike that does everything well. And when you look at the price and that, well, I don't know, I think if you had a seat bike you, and uh, you wanted to move up to something like this, I think it's a, yeah, well, I wouldn't, no, I was gonna say I wouldn't ever say to buy one, but I already got one. All right, I would, say, I would recommend you buy one. You know, I see no fault in it at this stage. You know, like, who knows? If, if I do a review back here after I put a few 100 kilometres on, um, if anything, the only drawback I would see wrong with this bike would be if you're used to riding a C5 like I am all the time and have no power, you'd have to be a little bit more careful out along the road because on the C5 when you're cruising at 100 kilometres an hour, you're really not that far off the top speed of 130 kilometres an hour. Uh, I've already been told that these bikes will push close on 180 k's now. So if you're out of 100, you're virtually only a little over half power. So, yeah, you know, they, they could get you into a, uh, a fistful of dollars problems with the wrong people. So looking at it that way, um, you, you would have to be a little bit careful and but apart from that, uh, I suppose that's a risk you take. You, you know, when you break into the 47 horsepower thing, you know, after being in 27, that's a risk you've got to take. And uh, when you move into something like this, and you know, if something goes wrong and you can't handle the power, well, you can always go back to 27 and uh, learn your lesson that way. But I think overall, I, um, I'm pretty happy with how things are going. It looked fairly dire straight, that's why I was frigging around for one day to decide if I was going to take it for a run, wondering how how things were going to pan out. But it looks positive at the moment, and I can get back on the bike and take it back home now with confidence that the uh, trip to Sydney was uh, worth the trouble to get it.